So, uh, namaste, good morning, and uh, today it is uh, 22nd July 2023, uh, and we are having our online masterclass on basic uh, legal uh, toolkit. Um, it's a day in day out transaction that we handle, whether it's a documentation or statutory norms or anything for that matter. I mean, it's important that we know what are the basic um, process system uh, that we have in place, which will End of the day, one is to ease our transaction, our business, our work. And second thing is that we know what we are doing um, when we know the basic legal uh, toolkit in place. So um, with that, uh, I wish to invite um, Advocate Ishani Goyal, um, who is going to be running the session today. Um, before Ishani can just share a brief about her, uh, I invite, invite Satyan and Lalrin. If you can just unmute yourself and give a brief about you, like where are you, where are you located? Um, what is the problem that, or what is that you're looking forward to from this particular session? Um, yes, yeah. Mr. Satyan, you unmuted. Yeah, yeah, good morning. Good morning, Meera. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, actually, I am 25 years experienced in uh, environmental management and compliance services. So when I saw this first thing, uh, uh, compliance, so that, that is something which I have uh, from the start of my career, I've been doing all these compliance matters. But my expertise lies in environmental compliances. So uh, we have an environmental monitoring laboratory in Goa. Uh, and we have a software, web-based software solution where uh, these compliance requirements, uh, like uh, especially your HR related, your uh, environment related, your safety, uh, industrial safety, I mean to say, and other, uh, if you want to tailor make it, so we give a data uh, storage point where, where you know, you, you get, we give a, a requisite alerts at appropriate time with uh, with the time gap in the, so that you can, do your compliances. So we are, uh, if if uh, if we are looking into environmental compliances, then we give end-to-end -end solution. But other than that, storage of uh, data is something which uh, your compliances, like you know, you as you are in legal, you will understand that uh, your uh, compliances records has to be kept for five years, roughly. And from environment point of view, your monitoring data has to be kept for three years. And uh, then if you ask this data, which is fairly not available at any given point of time so we give this data storage space and then you can have that whole uh, you know the peace of mind to go into uh, the compliance requirements so that is that is our uh, area uh, we are targeting environment as such in the same environmental compliances under the environment act and uh, as, as the umbrella act environment act and then there are some 14 15 acts which are there under uh, so that compliances we take care of right now we are in goa uh, we have a software which can be used pan India. So mm -hmm. if this platform, we can share this, share our idea. It might be a next session we can take in our, uh, on our solution that we provide from the legal point of view. Oh, that that sounds really great. Um, uh, Tanya, I'm just putting you on a mute okay. because we'll be coming to you. Thank you, Mira. Uh, you're welcome, Mr. Satyan. Uh, as I, as you were sharing about your experience and about you sharing uh, your knowledge also, uh, that sounds really great. Um, after this uh, masterclass, we will connect offline. I'm leaving my um, mobile number in the chat box. You can just leave a WhatsApp note or a hi with your name. And um, I'll connect with you, understand about your offerings. And from there, we can just, just work accordingly. It sounds great. We would be more than happy to host you based your offering and our uh, vision also. Thank you so yeah. much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, moving on quickly to Lalrin. Lalrin, would you like to unmute yourself and just share about where are you and uh, um, what is that you are looking for? As a couple of them are joining into the session, I'm just adding quickly. Uh, Tanya and Suman, you're just joining in. We are having a quick introduction, uh, like uh, for a minute or so, so that we know from where you're coming, what is that you're looking forward to from this particular session. And then we'll have our trainer and mentor advocate Ishani Goel, who will be taking further the uh, um, class. Yes, Lalrin. Uh, thanks, Mira. Hi, uh, I'm Lalrin. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to have to keep my video off because there's a lot happening. It'll be very distracting for everyone. So, uh, yes, as I, said, as I said, my name is Lalrin and I'm based in Aizol, Mizoram. 
although right now I'm in Delhi. But um, so the reason why I'm attending this is for three reasons. The first is that uh, I have just sort of started a startup and I've um, registered as a company and, and registered as a startup under Startup India. So there are a lot of things that I'd like to learn in terms of uh, the kind of things that we have to do, not just compliances, but as a we're into tech. Uh, so there's a lot of things that I would like to know. Um, I, do, I don't know what this uh, session will cover, but you know anything that I can learn get from this session, I'd be happy to. The second thing is that we are also making some physical products that are going to be put on for e-commerce as well as a physical store. So anything related to that. And the third is that we're also, um, because my community has very, uh, well, we're just sort of entertaining the idea of entrepreneurship. So we're trying to, for those of us who are already kind of in the space, we're trying to get others, empower others as well and trying to tell them, you know, these are the things that you can do in order to get into entrepreneurship. So, um, yeah, as Mira had mentioned before, I would, uh, it's really nice to hear that, you know, it's not just this session, but it goes on. So I'd love to collaborate later on and see, you know, how we can work together as well. Yeah, so that's me uh, in short. Thank you. That's really great. Thanks a bunch for that, uh, Lalrin. I mean, as the session just started, uh, uh, we have Mr. Satyan as well as in uh, talking about collaboration. I mean, uh, I would say that's, that's how we build business for each other and for us. Um, and Aldrin, I just shared my mobile number. I think you already have my number. I've messaged you on WhatsApp. So uh, if you, yes, yeah. you can just drop in a message uh, with your uh, venture name about what you want to do. Uh, you don't have to be like you have to restrict it to only a few words or something. The ideas, the thoughts that you have, just put it into the message and I will reconnect with you uh, after the session. Sure. Yeah. yeah, thanks a bunch. Uh, thanks, Lalrin. Um, Tanya, would you like to unmute uh, and give a brief about where you are coming from and what is that you're looking for? That would really help. Sure. Hi. Uh, hi, Mira. Hi, everybody. I uh, run a publishing house and I got intrigued about uh, the legal tools for startup. It's not really a startup. It's about a 30 year old business. Uh, used to be a family business that I've taken over. So uh, the intent of joining this is to understand. So there are certain legal nuances that I do understand regarding my business uh, in terms of IP, copyright that are generally used in publishing. But I just wanted to understand uh, what other than what I know of exist in terms of uh, legal things that I should take care of in a startup. Right. So the intent is just to fill that knowledge gap that I have. Thank you so much, Tanya. I'm sure uh, Ishani is listening to all of you, what you're sharing in terms of what is that you're looking for. Uh, yeah, definitely. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, so I, I definitely have a form that I would be floating it over here in the chat box so that uh, you all, it wouldn't take more than a minute. It just, it's just, it's about how did you come to know about this particular session? Uh, that's that's what it is with your name, email ID, contact number, and how did you come across this? So you can just do it as the session is going on the go. Uh, one, because a couple of you come in from the entrepreneurial background, a couple of you have, are into startup, uh, setting it up or taking it to the next level. I'm sure these contacts will come a long way. That is the purpose behind making a note of these details. And yes, uh, your details will be added added uh, to the email list. Uh, email list, it's not to say, hey, what I'm doing, what are you doing? No. Uh, the email list uh, we are building uh, to share uh, updates with regards to the events, the collaborations, whatever new, I mean, uh, new things that we are coming up with or something that we are doing, we wish to keep you informed about it. We, we don't intend to spam. As we don't intend to get spammed, we intend not to spam others also. Uh, yeah, so the, I'll be sharing that uh, form in a bit. Thanks a bunch, Tanya. With that, moving to uh, hi, Manjima. Madhu. This also the files, not the designs. Uh, Sonia, I'm just uh, uh, Sonia. Would you like to uh, go next, uh, giving a brief about you from where you are and what is that you're looking forward to from this session, and then yeah, we can move to Manjima. Hi, Sonia. Yeah, hi. Uh, so basically, uh, my venture is uh, into. Uh, natural fiber-based fabrics, and we make uh, infant wear and uh, maternity wear uh, with that, and they are 100% biodegradable products. So uh, as of now, we are just starting our venture. 
So just launching it next month. So there are a lot of uh, queries, a lot of uh, apprehensions. So just wanted to get uh, as much knowledge as possible. Sure, as you receive as much as knowledge possible, um, see as you can just relate with your current um, venture stage and you think there are something that you want to ask, I mean, without any bias in your mind, is it going to be legal? It is not going to be legal, don't worry. The questions that come in your mind, you can put it even in the chat box and we will take one by one and move further. Thanks, Sonia, for that. Uh, moving on yeah, to- Thank you. I think that was Manjima. I think we lost her. All right, without much ado, like we are now at 10.15. So uh, handing over the stage uh, to advocate Ishani. Ishani, thank you so much uh, for accepting this invite uh, to do this. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I definitely want to give an introduction about Ishani, but I'm not going to go in a paper mode way. Um, I'm, I'm sure you would relate to what I am sharing. It is basis my experience uh, with uh, Ishani. Of course, she is my lawyer too. Uh, that's how, you know, I realized what I started benefiting. Uh, I'm sure the people, the community of Maya Kata should also benefit as my intention behind getting Ishani for us. And also it is in line with Maya Kata's uh, business offering. It is in line with Maya Kata's vision. Uh, wherein once upon a time when I was struggling during my mid-career crisis with an idea, I didn't know that it was an idea. I didn't know that there was some problem that I was solving. I didn't know there was a problem too after quitting my 17 years of corporate journey and motherhood happened it looked totally out of syllabus um I, but today it is in the name called maya kata um so when that one thought one idea one um one one thing in our mind can take a form outside our mind in the form of a venture i'm sure you guys might be doing several more things and there are so many more people around who are looking for these kind of an assistance so uh, ishani has been um i would rather call you know they say um, they say, do not lie uh, to a lawyer, do not lie to a doctor. I would say don't lie to anyone, but then especially to the lawyer, uh, rather than <coughs> having that as a quote, I would say a lawyer and an accountant are a big investment any person can have. Um, I would, I would, I would definitely say that, you know, a lawyer and an accountant is a big investment um a person or an organization can have and uh, knowing our basic there's a message my first doubt is regarding my product i do okay we'll come to that good that you pointed it out so um so it's important that we know the basic rights basic legal aspects so that we don't miss on things um ishani has been taking care of my kata's legal aspects and um, you know she's been helping out with uh quite a few things with regards to gst and Every month, you know, things are in line. I would say that's because of her. Um, um, she, it is not she sticks to a document and she sees you, but someone who goes outside the system, I would rather call her as a tech geek, a tech lawyer also, uh, who goes out of the way, who goes um, all along with you to get your work done. And she gives you the proper insight. All right, Ishani, that's from my end. Over to you. Um, we would love to hear from you uh, for today's session. Yes. Yeah, thanks a lot, Meera. Thanks again for such a good introduction of mine. So let's go forward with the things. So first thing, like, I want to, first, like, you all are doing startups, even if you have business. So business is something which is very different from a startup because startup disrupts the market which business generally don't and uh, when we talk about just a business idea then for example are selling something if you're selling an umbrella in raining days so it will definitely gonna sold out right but it is not the same thing which happens with the startups because startups need to come with such a different solution which is not yet there in the market Though it is not always that uh, you come up with very different things, you come up with very different solutions and everything should be noble. It can be you who is noble, like your way of doing that thing. You as a person who is bringing change uh, to that whole thing. So now the next uh, thing is like when it comes to business and startups, the first step of every business is that business idea evaluation is development and along with that like when we go forward our marketing strategies our product marketing uh, 
like product market fit and other parts because business is all about profit if you are not making profit then it's like not going to work even if you have very good registrations very good legal uh, points and all other things so the first step would always be your product your business and like the profit we are making now uh, the fourth step and the most important one is the legal essentials and other things related to any startup because if you are very good in every part but if uh, you are making loss in the legal front then you gonna loss at end that's why to just have a covering over this loss we are having this session right now that building a startup foundation essential loop uh, legal tools that we can have for the startups so let's go forward uh, with the things so we will be discussing uh, the contracts which is important for us we will be discussing the important legal registrations we can have we can we will be discussing the ips we will be discussing the data security and like so much things we will be discussing even uh, like we could also discuss about the funding and why the funding is important some people say is no uh, bootstrap is uh, fine enough for like i don't need funding and what is series a series b series c funding and how it works everything related to the funding and growth along with the certifications also i would like to uh, thank you all the participants joining this session and would definitely want to answer sonia's question on the thing satyan uh, your queries related to uh, data security and other things so we'll be discussing that as well let's go forward so yes uh, like when we talk about the introduction so the legal all the legal tools that we need so i have created one major thing uh, for that i am taking the literal last time but it's not the last one so first uh, the thing that i would be having is uh, this wait a second yes so the first thing is uh, that i have divided this whole journey into four parts because the name of my venture is startup karu so i think that there are only four things that we need to focus on the first one is shuru karu why uh, the shuru karu thing is there like first thing which comes up by legal registrations is the legal registrations itself like choosing the right model for your business whether it's llp opc private limited company its partnership form or the sole proprietorship there can be different ways out so like when we talk about uh, the right business model uh, so what comes in my mind is like some people don't know about the opc concept and like mira also is a opc so opc stands for one person company and it is not anywhere less than the private limited but it has only one director and the second person is a nominee so you can be the sole entrepreneur of your venture and can try out things without having the second person involved in the very first stage of your business because what happens when we are involving other person we have trust issues we have so many other things like other person is not contributing as per our energy and like sometimes energy and vibes of the people also don't match so that's why business fails due to like we don't have the right team with us that's why the business fails as well so why not to start uh, with a one person company and like first thing is why we should choose uh, the legal models legal registration why can't we just name it a brand like this is my brand uh, i name it so and why i can't move forward with it so this question uh, can be answered just on one point that is a liability who will be liable for the losses who will be uh, liable for any kind of any kind of liability that you will be having while you are going ahead with the business is another people who are uh, having the business with you collaborations and all will be entrusted to have any kind of transaction with you
because i myself will not uh, be interested in any kind of collaboration with another person or like if he is not registered if he can't give me gst credits for my purchases if he is not somebody who is under the laws because if any kind of dispute happens then i will not be able to manage that because there is no legal authority binding on that person making that person like like there is no catch there you can't catch that person later on if there is any risk for the liability if i talk about there are two kinds of legal registrations i say two because it is divided uh, into the two based on the liability it has that first is the sole proprietorship and the partnership firm the registered partnership firm these two kinds of registrations have unlimited liability but when i say unlimited that it, it means that if there is any liability by the business laws or any kind of reputation loss to other which is a liquid damage then you will your personal property will be at stake even uh, it might uh, sound like a joke to you but it is very correct to say ghar bik jayega tumhara so that is the thing like definitely uh, you are uh, Residential property can even be at stake if we are a sole proprietorship or a partnership firm. So that's why there is another set of legal registrations that is private limited company. When it comes to word limited, that means that your liability is limited. The liability here is on the shares, on the money that you have invested in that venture. So just that. liability is limited in that case another is the one person company which is a private limited company with one director it is registered under section 4 of the companies act and the third one is limited liability partnership so it's a kind of partnership having the limited liability so why is it so that government is only providing majority of the benefits to the private limited to the opc and the ll because they also want our company the next generations company to be limited by their liability to have a control over the losses that uh, the business will be offering like they will be having in future so then we will be next going next forward like i would invite questions uh, from the participants on the on the first thing that is choosing the right legal registration for your business like is there anyone who is confused on choosing the right legal registration for your company because i do have served that clients like who take a, around one month even two three months in just deciding the right business model for their company it depends on the number of people you have do you have like one person with you only or like you have three four persons who want to just come up together and want to start a company or like you don't have that much of the amount to be invested in the company for example a private limited companies need at least 1 lakh of the share capital to be deposited after registration in their as a current uh, in their current bank accounts so sometimes that much amount is not available with the entrepreneurs but i believe that if you are starting out the business some funds like you need in the very starting in the very initial stage but you also need a like complete business development you need profits to be there but sometimes you need to have investing uh, investments to be made out at the very initial stage for buying the machinery raw materials for buying another stuff but uh, like if it's a tech business then even like at the very first stage the developers and the technicians will be taking uh, that amount of the money which is like not you will not be able to have at the initial stage so you have to go for the seed funding rounds and the things so we will be discussing that in future but there are always priorities which decides that what kind of legal registration we should have for our venture so if you will be legally registered and you will be getting so many benefits from the government of india 
you will be getting a recognition among uh, like other entrepreneurs other business owners you will be getting more traction when it comes to collaborations and other things again i'm inviting a questions from the participants uh, on this point or i'll just move forward towards explaining the differences between the kinds of registrations uh, hi yeah so uh you you can just ask questions or if you think it is not a question it is something to be clarified i would suggest not to hold that from your end because uh more you ask more you would benefit from this session uh let alone the benefit part alone i mean uh, i'm sure there would be a takeaway for you also um shivani you just joined in we have started with a session you can just um join in you can um, ask your questions even in the chat so um any of you have queries or something you can and in the meantime i have just dropped in uh, a google form over here this form uh, is to collect details pertaining to your questions or um, clarifications um, you can fill it fill in it over there also also we wish to know how did you get to know about this master class so we would want you to uh, fill the google form it wouldn't take more than a minute thank you yes yeah, shivani you can unmute and ask Hi, uh, sorry, I'm joining a little late uh, because I just came to know about the program. Uh, my one question is, uh, what is the difference? Because currently I'm working in the, as a proprietor. So I want to know what's the difference between a sole proprietorship and OPC? Definitely. Uh, so the first difference is the liability. Like a sole proprietorship is unlimited, having the unlimited liability. If you will be having any kind of business laws or uh, like beauty collaborations or like any person sues you for the damages, then your personal property will be at stake. You have to make the payment of the damages even from your personal property. But okay. if it's an OPC, then you are not personally liable. I will not say that it's a kind of thing that if you do anything, then also you will not be personally liable. But okay. up to a certain limit, you will not be personally liable. Uh, but okay. if you do something very like uh, out of the limits or like if you are not legally responsible, then there is a doctrine for the lifting of the corporate veil where the person who did the wrong act, the illegal act to the another person can be whole personally liable, but that is not happening like every time because what happens sometimes it's just a business activity and other person gets the loss and sometimes they use the another person like for example if you deliver any kind of uh, project to another person and that project damages in future like if it's a product and product damages in between then you will not be personally liable for the damages because in the OPC, your liability is limited by the investment you made in the company, by the shares you have in that company. So okay. OPC is a private limited company having one person as the as a director, as a solepreneur who can handle out things, and they will like there is no need to have another person as a director with you in the OPC. So that's why that is the very good thing uh, for those who don't have the second person with them. Uh, even in the IM Bangalore uh, cohort, I noticed one thing that majority of the entrepreneurs have their uh, mothers, their sisters with them as a second uh, director, but they are working as a sleeping uh, director. Like they are not doing anything. They are just signing off the documents and all. I don't uh, recommend uh, this kind of thing uh, for everybody because if you are having the second person only has a liability on you like if they are just uh, for the sake namesake uh, are with you and not contributing anything then why not to go ahead as an opc and uh, i will never suggest having uh, your partners and directors from your family members because they are somebody who you can't uh, like uh, fire you can't fire your family members from the business if it comes to like you're not uh, doing uh, like you're not contributing that much which i want which uh, you're not matching my vibes and not matching my energy because uh, for example if you are having your sibling with you because i do i also do have my uh, younger sibling uh, with me as a co-founder 
but his and my energy matches uh, but that is not the same uh, with my another sibling because we used to generally fight in between on the things like you are not contributing that much and some stuff like this so always have people with you on uh, to whom you can uh, provide the responsibilities and they consider the responsibilities uh, like this is my responsibility this is my work and i have to uh, do this thing opc is also be written as a private limited but only with one director and it's got a dress under section 4 of the companies act so if i go forward uh, with a small difference between the private limited and the opc so i'm scrolling out this infographic for you that she is that uh, a private limited has two directors where uh, opc has one director but maximum both the companies have 15 directors also one more thing that a opc can convert into a private limited within 2 years without having any uh, much compliances involved then uh, when it comes to auditor appointment this uh, like only same for both the companies when it comes to compliances it is better for the opc it is easier for the opc to manage out than the private limited uh, when it comes to share capital then like there is no minimum requirement of the share capital but if capital uh, in exceeds to the 50 lakh limits then the opc have to convert to the private limited now so i am suggesting that opc is good for those who are in the msme thing or like having the small business when you want to scale up having the another person as a director then you can any time convert it into a private limited. then like the turnover goes uh, beyond two crores then you can change to the private limited company and uh, so on like there are so many other things which is involved like they are not eligible for the fdi that is why majority of the people in india in terms of company registration is having only the private limited they don't want to try out opc they thought that we will be having that kind of business that in future if i need private limited and i also have to burn some a uh, few bucks more on it like on the conversion it but that is not the thing like first everybody should try out things first i would suggest if you are uh, if you have a business idea as meera do um meera like do it very well she has a business idea of maya kata she registered herself as a msme right meera then later on having your like when she found that my business is all set i am doing well in this business then she converted herself in the opc later on if she find that i am doing very good i have a very good traction got funding and another person having a, a energy and vibe matching uh, with me she can add them as a director and can convert into a private limited company so just go step by step that would be very uh, like good in terms of risk management as well because you don't have that much of the risk uh, with you in case you are not very sure on the business uh, like whether it will work out or not so that's why moving forward step by step so there is always a right time to move forward with the things like because maximum uh, in the opc there can be one person as a member and like in the terms of directors and turnovers and everything so when you find that you have crossed a turnover of 30 lakh rupees then you can move forward to the private limited from the opc but when you feel you have a turnover of 5 lakh rupees then uh, you should consider it's a time to move on to the opc from the sole proprietorship to the opc or you find that you need seed fund or fund grants or you want uh, investors uh, to be like invite in for your venture ideas and all then it's the right time to move forward to the opc so this is all about uh, this last one, one can you repeat yeah uh, from opc to private limited and then the last what you said no first from the sole proprietorship to the opc uh, then uh, opc to the private limited company so private correct. limited company having unlimited number of uh, turnover you can have right it's you are all set then then uh, there is another very uh, new kind of registration which is the llp 
um, LLP is a conscious uh, interruption over here. Um, so, uh, Shivani, like uh, the form is there. I would want you to fill in more details. And to folks over here, we have an exclusive WhatsApp group. We don't spam again. We don't talk about anything else but for the legal terminologies or legal facts, where we have Ishani also in that community. Your questions, fill it in a form and put it also probably in the chat box um, because um, there are a couple of others also who are just messaging who wants okay. to ask questions. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, but, Shivani, keep all your questions. I do not want you yeah. to miss it out. Yeah, thanks yeah. a bunch. Uh, so in the essence of the time, we're just moving to the next uh, part. I hope it's okay with you, Ishani. Definitely. Uh, we'll be answering the questions of the participants in the group as well. And in case you want to like connect further on the calls and something, we'll be happy to connect. Great. So and then now I could relate to my journey when you were asking about the question. So I can definitely add on a little bit whatever possible from my end also later. Thanks a bunch. So uh, when it comes to uh, LLP, so LLP is always beneficial for those like having the service kind of business. Like for example, that uh, business Satyam has uh, with him like any kind of service provider, doctors, lead lawyers, CAs and any kind of service provider who is not in the product business, who is not interested for initial equity sharing. For example, like I am working so good. Some people thought that I can move forward as a bootstrap. And why not? Bootstrap is a very good kind of thing when it comes to a strong business model. If you have a strong business model, you don't need funding uh, at the initial stage. So then you should move forward to the LLP, having less the number of compliances, less the number of uh, uh, registers to be maintained. Very few, like I say, the headache as compared to the private limited will be on the lower side. So sometimes it also becomes a very difficult point for the entrepreneurs to choose uh, whether I should private limited or whether I should LLP. So I say if you are a product based business then move towards the private limited. But if you are a service based business then move towards the LLP. So that can be a simpler uh, kind of uh, like choosing thing for you like if I'm a product-based business and private limited service, then it's LLP and both those two directors and the turnover thing like is also a kind of advantage for the LLP that you don't need auditor appointment like to up to a certain limit and then compliance is on the lower side, business funding, or uh, like you can have only by the way of collaborations, but private limited can raise funding by the equity sharing. So what is the equity sharing we'll be discussing later? And it is same as you saw on the shark tank. Like I want this much of the amount or for this much of the percentage uh, as equity from my private limited company. So as I wrote here that it's good for doctors and lawyers to have. So like it's all about type of the registration one can have for the business based on the liability, based on the funding priorities, based on the services that they are providing. Next, I want to move forward towards the legal structure we have already discussed that what kind of legal structure we can have. Uh, then we are moving forward to the contracts. Now, uh, like when I say Shuru Karu, so we have already like started out. We already have our legal registration done, for example. Next, the second step is protect. When it comes to protect our business model then how we can protect it like the first thing we will be requiring the contracts so we will be having the business contracts employment contracts and we will be also having the service contracts uh, for the collaborations we will be having mutual partnership agreements so on like there are so many things we can try out so there are like confidential contracts, there are vendor contracts. I will also be sharing templates with Mira of for these contracts. And even if you want, like, 
some templates of the very good like very normal contracts which is very general in nature like everybody wants it for example the employment contract so you, you will be benefited out from it you can just uh, have it as a template do uh, no, every time whatsapp group you can put it across in that we will we will share it in that ishani as you share it with me i will put it in yes. the yeah also like every time templates don't work out uh, perfectly because our uh, templates have a predefined set of terms and conditions but it is not always that everybody wants that kind of terms and conditions for them then it's uh, you should consider that it's a time to contact a person who can create uh, contracts uh, for you according to your terms and conditions which you want for your business so when we uh, call uh, when we discuss the contracts thing then the first thing which comes to my mind is certain clauses which is very important in every contract these terms uh, and clauses are for example arbitration clause sometimes people forget about the arbitration clause but uh, i should make you remember on this point arbitration clause is very important because if you will not having the arbitration clause in your contract then you can't go to the arbitration because supreme court has made it very clear that if a contract has no arbitration clause in it then another party cannot get fine uh, to enter into the arbitration so it is always good to have the arbitration clause in the contract because we all know that indian courts are very slow in providing relief to the people and who will be uh, like going to the courts on a daily basis just to handle out things just to clear out the mess and the disputes so it's better to have a very fast and like way of clearing the disputes so when i talk about the adr mechanisms like alternative dispute resolution mechanisms which in which we have mediation at the very first in the mediation both the parties will sit up like together having their lawyers or the mediators with them who will be like solving out the disputes uh, for you sometimes uh, like it is not that helpful because mediators whatever uh, the mediation they will have cannot be the legal binding on the parties that's why you have to enter into another kind of adr which is the arbitration so in the arbitration like you will be having a arbitrator on in front of whom you will be having your contracts your uh, like pleadings like in a very informal manner like because if it comes to legal courts then everything goes on very formally it has a step wise procedure for everything so you have to manage uh, like all the things along with the steps and you should hire a lawyer for that but in the arbitration generally it uh, like you can manage out even things yourself as well so that's why uh, arbitration is a very essential thing to go for even nowadays we have odr online dispute resolution where if you are there in bangalore somebody is there in mumbai then you can have online dispute resolution uh, between both the parties another thing is regarding uh, the dispute resolution in the courts because you should open it for the dispute resolution in the courts as well so always try to have a uh, jurisdiction which is um, beneficial for you as well but what happens that sometimes what we thought uh if you having a business all over in india for example you are selling out your products in every part of and then i here in delhi uh, got a bad product or like a damaged product then what happens i asked you for the refund and uh, due to some constraints you denied a uh, order for making the refund of that damaged uh, item that i have received So what happens? I uh, sues you in the consumer court. Then what will be the next step that consumer court will be? Notice, uh, provide the notice to the another person as a respondent. Then you have to come to Delhi and uh, you have to make a reply of the pleadings or the complaint, consumer complaint that I made in the court. Then what? Some people have a mindset or like I say, they are not aware enough. they thought that if i wrote in my contract or on the website that only jurisdiction for my contract will be the bangalore then you can't sue me in delhi 
but this is not the case this is not uh, as per the indian laws as per the indian laws if you are making business if you are selling products in anywhere in india or like in a particular city then the person who is residing in that city having your services in that city can sue you in the judicial courts of that city as well so the clause of the contract that uh, you can't sue me other than the courts out of the bangalore that will not gonna work out so that's why like you have to be prepared for those things uh, if you are a product based business that if you are providing a uh, products to somebody if they got damaged then i as a lawyer will recommend you to make the refunds as soon as possible because if that person will sue you uh, in the consumer courts then it will be very it gonna be very complicated and very expensive for the other person to manage all then uh, we have a second thing in the contract is some kind of contracts we have on our websites which is very important these are the terms and services the refund policy there your privacy policy when i uh, talk about the privacy policy if you are having any kind of business or transactions in europe then you also need gdpr policy plus uh, like if in india the government of india under the it act 2000 made it compulsory by the 2019 amendment that you need data storage uh, servers to be there in india for the confidential data is a certain ask for i uh, invite certain for uh, his queries on this point regarding to data privacy because what happens like indian government made it necessary for you to store their confidential data which has for example aadhar cards of another person like i am having the aadhar cards of my clients for uh, their business institutions then where you will store that So you can't show this data into servers outside it. That's why majority of the Indian legal compliance companies shifted their servers from outside of India to the inside India. Like Vakil Search is one of other competitors has also uh, they have also shifted out uh, their just a second. Uh, So they also have shifted out their servers from UK to India because it is compulsory as per law. So another thing is regarding the password protection things. If you are storing passwords of your uh, users on the website, if it's a subscription model based for business, having the login ID credentials of the people, then you have to store the passwords in the encrypted model. so these are some things that you have to make sure like even if the password got leaked then uh, these encryption if it's stored in the encrypted form then nobody will be able to like decrypt it and will not be able to breach the security of your systems please go ahead meera yeah so you were just talking about this website and the data secure data security or privacy part um so when we have a website uh, ishani i mean what are the what is the kind of a legal um, um do i call it as a disclaimer or something that we need to have put on our website i mean how should it be um, yeah, definitely like it always depends on the type of the website it is for example if it's a legal website for example mm-hmm. if it's a legal service provider website or a law firm website or okay. a blog website or a e-commerce website then i will be uh, telling you what according to the service for so let's go ahead with the e-commerce first e-commerce websites needs uh, first thing as a privacy policy if you want uh, anybody wants in no doubt it's a privacy policy second is the terms of use and conditions okay so third is their refund policy fourth okay. is their service contract that uh, this will be our uh, legal transaction like this is how it will be going to be done and other things plus a policy according to your business model if it's a e-commerce business having uh, for example offline products got delivered to some other okay. person then everything related to the tracking of the products uh, other things like according to the products itself uh, the policies will be designed plus vendors policy if it's a multi vendor e-commerce website having so many multi vendors got uh, uploaded their products on the website 
okay. then you should have a vendors policy as well on the website now uh, some okay. people have a, a very con- normal like it's a generous confusion some people have in mind one of my client asked me before that if i will be uploading a policy on the website as a digital format and i will not be taking printed uh, print out of it getting it stamped on or like printed on the stamp paper and get it signed physically will my policy be a binding on another person or not like it's just uploaded on the website right uh, i am not taking the signatures of the another person on it. so then will that policy be a binding on the other person is anybody having the same question like this like if i just upload something on my website and i don't took the signatures physically on the agreement of the another person then will that policy or the terms and conditions or the agreement will be binding on another person or not so please uh, write in the chat box uh, if you have a similar query as yes uh, like you have s- same kind of query uh, with you so satin uh, say yes uh, similar query he has so what happens like if you are having a website if you go upload a policy on it and while having the sign up form you have a tick box button uh, you must have noticed that is on the every e-commerce uh, site like amazon flipkart every site you uh, have signed up in past before so they have a small box a tick box and then it is it i accept terms and conditions and on the word terms and conditions there is a link attached so when you click on this uh, word terms and conditions then another page opens up showing you the terms and conditions or any pop up shows you the terms and conditions and when you click tick on it then you got bind by that agreement and the policy you can't deny that i will not uh, follow this policy and the contract terms etc but always keep in mind that natural law is above every law in the country in the world so don't frame arbitrary policies once a time one of my uh, client in mumbai she said that uh, my husband is lending out 25 lakhs of the money to another person for the investment in their business he wants a return of 50 lakhs on it and i just um, thought a shock like if you are lending any person 25 lakh rupees then at most you can have 12% or the 18% of the interest on it another uh, kind of like interest like you will be paying up 3 lakhs for she or wants like she wants a term that this another person should pay us 3 lakhs a month as a interest plus the principal amount at the end of one year then i told her that it is above uh, more than the principal amount itself like you are having the charging interest more than the principal amount which is not justified at all you can't lend out the money to any person with this high rate of interest it is not uh, it is totally not sustainable in the court of law according to the natural laws it is not sustainable at all so always keep in mind while framing uh, framing the policies for your venture that if it, it is a policy against the natural justice it is against the laws of india then it will not gonna work out you can't say that you got signed this agreement and that's why this policy is binding on you because all the policies should be non arbitrary you should not make use of your uh, your like your position as a e-commerce uh, service provider or as a like as a service provider or like because you have a dominance over other the person don't make uh, unnecessary use of it sometimes you might have noticed uh, like while signing the employment agreements what employers do they used to have a uh, bonds got signed by the employers that you you will not uh, leave the office like for the three years you are signing the bond with us uh, if you will leave out the office before like uh, if you leave this job before three years and you have to pay us 80 lakh rupees something like this like in gurgaon it's very common uh, in delhi and char like every firm is signing uh, these kinds of bonds but i must say that these bonds have no legal value these uh, bonds will they can't find any employee uh, that they have to work in the toxic environment for 3 years just because they have signed a shit bond 
it is not acceptable in the court of law if another person will go in the court of law court will clearly say that this bond has no legal validity the another person is free from all kind of interest but the organization still follow uh, ishani because even during my corporate stint uh, uh, yeah I, um, why they follow out this because the another person who is at the end like employee he don't know that it is not the binding he has a mindset that because that i have signed the bond that's why uh, agar main chhodunga uh, then uh, like i have to pay it like so we should know yes, basic just, legal law right exactly. all of us see uh, i i have seen many people who wanted to quit but they could not uh, and they were you know like literally like a bonded labor to that organization for 3 to 5 years just because they signed their bond and couple of organ- organizations also asked them to submit their uh, educational certificates i mean does exactly. law law allow them uh the allows the organ no, no 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 law does not allows any corporation any school even like what happens sometimes schools also retain the my uh, they sometimes what happens like when i was uh, i was in school i was in sixth year then i changed my school in the seventh year then what happens because my father is a lawyer he knows uh, the law and i always uh, get protection due to him every time like what happens Uh, when i was changing out to school my school denies providing me the migration certificate and they also retained uh, my school living certificate and other uh, documents with them even birth certificate uh, original they have retained uh, with them saying uh, that we will not be able to provide you uh, the certificate you can have another certificate with you another birth certificate then my father clearly gives them a notice a legal notice that uh, send me my school living certificate along with uh the birth original birth certificate of my uh my daughters because what happens like because people don't know parents don't know about these things employee employees don't know that uh they don't need to provide a original mark sheet uh like of the college degrees or something to the employee uh sorry sorry the employer and they don't know that they don't need to submit the original aadhar card to the employer that's why uh they used to come in that loop and why uh, i believe this happens because there is a lack of job security there is a lack of uh, like opportunities for the people so people thought that i am getting the job either on uh, like whatever terms it is i am uh, fine with it unless and until i get this job so just to get this job they just stuck in this loop of arbitrary terms and conditions and that's why it happens yeah as uh, sonia also wrote that my son was asked to lax if he leaves even one month earlier so lost the new job so that happens uh, but uh, what i believe is that even if you are aware about the things then uh, if uh, you will go to the court uh, for suing the other person for the things then uh, you will thought you might thought that i will be wasting out that much of the amount of the time in the court so let's pay this much of the amount just to Uh, free yourself from the harassment what happens uh, over time mira yeah, like i was on a shop and the shop owner was asking me price above than the mrp then i just i was just starting argumenting up with him that i will not pay amount more than the mrp and what he just told me that ma'am it's just a matter of 10 rupees then i just thought it's not a matter of 10 rupees it's a matter of right like my right is uh, the one which you are breaching and it was not acceptable at all like right? even if i burn up that much of the amount just to sue you just to make you understand this to make uh, you understand the lesson i will do that because you, then you will not again be uh, like following this illegal practice when anybody else you will not follow this unfair trade practice with any other customer who is not aware about his laws who don't have that much of the courage to stand for his rights so that's why any one has to stand for them so that is all about the contracts that you have to just make a contract with most of the terms and conditions but there should not be any arbitrary condition but yes there should be profitable conditions for your business it is not like you will uh, also drop the profit table uh, clauses and terms and conditions from the uh, agreements or uh, like revenue sharing and also like what happens one thing i want to just figure out uh, on the revenue sharing part is that while having the revenue sharing always 
keep aside the expenses never have the expenses got covered in the revenue sharing part have the revenue sharing just after the profits clearly because if you will involve the expenses in it then definitely the dispute will arise in future that who will be bearing these expenses so always have this uh, thing uh, in your contract that uh, your revenue sharing is apart from the expenses that your business having uh, in the collaboration then uh, i will be sharing as i said the templates with you to manage out like to have the things with you also i would invite any questions if somebody has uh, till then like any of the things if anybody wants to discuss then please go ahead Should I go ahead? Yeah, uh, just give me. Yeah, is my audible? Okay. Yes, Ashani, you are audible. Uh, I mean, for some crazy reason, my mute and uh, audio AV was AV got stuck. No worries at all. Uh, so Sonia has a question: Can we sign contracts even for job work? Yeah, like it's very normal to sign the contracts. Uh, but I'm saying about the illegal conditions in the contracts always. Got your contract reviewed and uh, got vetted with any legal professional or anybody who is uh, like can help you out with the legal terms and understanding the same. Because it is very important to read out contracts before you get it signed. And yes, you can sign the contracts from the from a website as well. From your website as a click wrap agreement. It is known as a click wrap agreement. So you can have it on your website. Get it linked with the policies. And then the policies will be binding on every person who will be signing on your website. For example, whether it's a, a vendor's contract, whether it's a like anybody who's joining a workshop, for example. So you can have a you can have a form on your website making it uh, IPR policies got bind on the participants of the workshop. Recently, you delivered such kind of uh, assignment. What happens like a uh, Lady is selling out the workshops for her architecture, like workshops. They want so it has IPs related, uh, like included in the workshop itself. So that's why she wants, like anybody who is joining out my workshop, should not leak any of the material, any of the workshop material and the learning and teaching material outside the workshop. So that's why all these things can be done from the contract itself. And when it comes to IP, which is involved in the contract itself, so you can protect your IPs by the contracts, that is the IPR contracts, corporate copyright contracts or trademark contracts, assignments are there for the copyright and the um, trademarks. If you want to assign it to the person, there are franchisee contracts. For example, if you want to have another person as a franchisee of your uh, business, then you can even protect your intellectual property rights in it. You, are, uh, you can provide them authority to use the logos and other business materials of your business along with the reputed name that you are using, like your goodwill. And also in the contract itself, you can protect the reputation of your firm, which is associated with the name of your company. And Satin has a question that legal agreement with employee for secrecy is valid. Completely it is valid. When it's uh, it is known as the non competence and non solicitation and like uh, confidentiality clauses can be there in the employment agreement. 
so you can make your uh, so once we have delivered the employment agreement for the hcl hcl uh, company so hindustan uh, corporation limited hcl so they have an employment contract for 500 people so you can imagine that like, any employee will not be interested in reading those 500 pages at all and they will be just signing on the pages where he is rated to sign so this uh, is what happens when it comes to signing of the contracts and making of the contracts so you can have the confidentiality clause you can have the ipr clauses in the agreement itself you can have the non solicitation non competitive uh, non competitive uh, clauses in the agreement also i make it uh, very clear that according to the indian contract act any non competitive clause cannot be beyond 2 years you can't say that you will not be having another business after 2 years they can have it even if the, the condition is there in the agreement because they are allowed to do so as per law as per the indian contract law which is overriding having the overriding effect over any kind of agreements you are signing so always keep in mind that you mention the non competitive uh, clause in the agreement but this non competitive clause should have a time period of 2 years not beyond that and on uh, like below that so that's why we just make sure that every sh thing should be according to law but should be there in the agreement and nothing should be arbitrary everything should sound valid and completely fine because uh like every single day supreme court is declaring one or another contract as not a legal binding so don't waste uh, money on such kind of agreements which is not even binding on your uh, people now the, another thing we have is the intellectual property so intellectual property it comes under the second slab which is protect karo because i have a name of my venture startup karo so the second thing comes up protect karo so how you will be gonna protect uh, other than the contracts is by securing your goodwill under the intellectual property laws so in india we have five kinds of intellectual properties uh, as such first is the copyright uh, as you all know about the copyright if i am telling you a joke then uh, can you copyright your joke uh, this uh, i want a answer on chat box can somebody copyright their joke like if i did have a joke uh, anybody can copyright this stand up comedy thing like any i think we can since you're asking it looks like we can but it's definitely a good question <laughs> any i would like to have like answers over this asunia yeah. said yes yeah. uh, like i also want answers from another फ्रेंडीन टोल मी i was in the third year of my law school and um, we are cracking jokes and uh, like just uh, our back we have studied the copyrights and patents then she said uh, you are infringing my copyright by copying my joke <laughs> so what i was like joke is not protected under the copyright law it is protected under the patent laws if the patents can protect the idea like because copyright does not protect the idea and a joke has a idea behind it which you are us like like which you are telling to another person so that's why a joke is not protected under the copyright neither it is protected under the patent laws because patent laws has another restrictions so that's why you can't protect your jokes so sorry or for the same but yes you can protect the whole stand up comedy uh, episode of your uh, like we are recording like buskar bassi or stand up comedy if somebody wants to have ips on it then they can definitely have copyright on the whole episode but yes one can't protect uh, their cop uh, joke under the copyright so that's why uh, we have very like 
we have a distinction between every copy uh, this intellectual properties and its types so for with copyrights we are protecting the content only the way you are expressing this content like if i am telling you a joke uh, in another way out like if i'm telling it in a funny manner or somebody tells you it in a crying like by crying out they are telling you a joke so this expression way of expression can only be covered under the copyright so copyright only covers the expression of the content uh, content not the content itself only the way of expression of the content we are please move um so since it's about this intellectual property uh, there are a lot of trainers and mentors ishani who upload their lms content on marketplaces like lms marketplaces yeah um their content i mean how how intel what what ip plays over here there uh, i'm connecting with the copyright uh, part also because the content given is by a trainer who uploads his or her content on a marketplace that marketplace will cover ip for them right um, mm -hmm. but what about this trainer her content i mean um, yeah very interesting question amira i got your uh, query so what happens for example i am teaching you the funding part so this is something which is uh, a content of mine which is the way of expressing which is already there like content is already there right funding is something which is already there i haven't discovered the funding till then i haven't discovered it only my way of expression like some teachers used to teach a uh, subject very nicely like they used to express and make them and their students understand very nicely they have a very good way of teaching so this way of teaching can only be copyrighted like another person cannot copy the video as such they cannot copy the whole content like just copy and cut it paste it that's why it has a word copy right so you can't copy it but you can have the idea uh, definitely got uh, steal from the content itself right i can watch the videos and can rewrite in my own words then copyright will be gone your whole uh, like uh, research and everything will be gone so that Uh, is the same thing which happens with the research papers so if somebody is having any research and uh, they are expressing uh, their research or like any research which they have did then if somebody copies the entire content then it is only the copyright infringement can be there but if they have removed the plagiarism from it then the copyright will not be there that is why ai which is generating the content nowadays is infringing the copyright of i will also want to highlight one of the famous case where what happens like there was a magazine agency some of you might let's say one is on the publishing patanya maybe is not in uh, uh with us now but uh, she was in the publishing what happens like there was a app they used to copy uh the news material from various good websites like hindustan unilever like there are so many hindustan times and so yes it unilever uh, it's times of india ebs now like so many websites are there so they just used to copy the headline of the website only 11 words and if somebody wants to read out this then they have to click and very new their website opens like the website of the main content holder opens so what basically they have a, a mind Right, that if I am just redirecting the users from my website to the content website, then I will not get the copy. That is not the case, because you are copying these eleven words, and these eleven words are enough for the copyright infringement case. And this person who is having this wonderful idea of app got sued by various news agencies, and they have to pay a compensation to them. The compensation is. uh what is the way of calculation of the compensation here it is the profit that you have generated by the leads by, by the redirection and the ads and everything so that is the way like you can't even copy the 11 words from somebody else contents if you haven't removed the plagiarism from it that is the thing now another thing uh, i want to take up the question of sonia uh, she has to say and Yeah so I have a little 
complicated one. Uh, <laughs> the thing is that uh, I had started my business, uh, my production last year, and uh, I had uh, my co-founders with me. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm the design and production head, so everything was designed by me, including the business idea was mine. But uh, once all the products were ready and just before the launch, like my co-founder was in charge of the uh, social media and website. So just before the launch, she took all the products saying that uh, she's doing a exhibition. And once the products were with her, uh, she said, no, it's not working out. Uh, and MOU was not signed because they said there were some issues and uh, there's no legal binding. And then they said, we are not in partnership anymore. So now all my products are also with her. The designs are also with her. The website is with her. I started all over again. Though I've done new designs, some of the designs I will be following. So now my question is that how do I go about it? This time I want to patent my designs or IP, whatever it's called, uh, uh, register it. But what do I do with my earlier designs? How can I claim on that? Because I don't have any legal binding. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, I am feeling sorry uh, for the loss you made just because you are not complying with the legal things. So what yeah. first thing every fa- founder should have with his co-founder if they are not siblings. But I will recommend that nowadays siblings are not also uh, loyal enough <laughs> because uh, legal courts have, yeah. civil courts have fight between the brothers as well. So always get signed the co-founders. It is yeah. something very important nowadays Co- without co-founders agreement one should not go ahead with any stranger uh, into the business things what happens uh, i tell you a story uh, my brother is an iitian and in his college one of his friend has a venture with another office friend. then they uh, have designed a very good patent technology and what happens after some days my audible yeah yeah so after some days, another boy got uh, deleted all the content from the computers of the first boy. And then he make another thing. And this patent technology, he got filed in his own name, like completely ditching his uh, friend and um, gone away with all the patent technology, all the inventions and everything. And now a first person is not able to do anything because he has no evidences with him that he is the one who actually created the uh, invention and everything as in your case you know? but you may be having uh, the files which is uh, like saved in your computer showing yes. that you are the one who designed these things and there may be files where you have delivered this content to another person like via yes. email or via any other uh, electronic mode. Yeah. Here, you can show that in the court of evidence. But what happens when it comes to evidence, it becomes very tricky to, to, to just prove the things out. So from the next time, I always recommend you to get a founder's agreement signed between the founders. Plus, I recommend you to assign uh, the rights of the copyright using trademark using every other intellectual property also one thing uh, to address uh, regarding the disclaimer as we asked so disclaimer uh, should be there on the website for the copyright because copyright is a human right hmm. it is protected under article 27 of the human rights uh, De- national human rights declaration so you are not required to registered under the copyright as such like before you don't want to get it uh, like scale up if you don't want to get it assigned to anybody else till then uh, you don't want to have the corporate protection under the laws like as a copyright registration as such because you have passing of infringement protection with you but you should always give a disclaimer you should always mention a clause that I am assigning this copyrighted material to you and you are not allowed to make it publicly like published or something without my condition. Just these words would be fine uh, as 
such for the future legal action because mm-hmm. this only few lines will enable you to file a case against that person but if you're not having any kind of uh, like electronic evidence or is i bitcoin mira is there like while you're having any kind of collaborations have it through emails don't have collaborations over on uh, whatsapp phone calls whatsapp is not uh, at all recommended because whatsapp has no legal binding like it is no legal sanctity whatsapp has whatsapp conversations is not allowed as evidence in the court of law So I think you can be not many are aware about, about this because many people. Uh, so sorry, I interrupted consciously over here. Um, no because I I I was not sure whether the WhatsApp uh, thing can be used as an evidence. So what I usually do is Sonia, like when I have a collaboration, like a verbal or or something, you know, offline through message through WhatsApp. After mm-hmm. I I tell them like we'll follow it up with a uh, with an email and with a uh, agreement or something, and I take that WhatsApp as a screenshot. while sending that mail and the agreement see as discussed in the was so whatsapp here is the email with the uh, letter what mm-hmm. happens is that we have a tendency of saving all these um, uh, things either in the gallery right so what i do is yeah. i put it like whatever transactions for example i have with my lawyer with ishani when she sends me some forms or when i ask her for the details i put it in that folder like you know legal things or company mm-hmm. registration so um uh, this is something even i learned it um, right from my uh, corporate journey as an hr because hr's journey is always with disclaimer <laughs> for that matter so uh, yeah. it's important that we add a note below our mail uh, mm-hmm. these also helps this is just like a cheat sheet you know like when i have any any of my mail that goes most sometimes mm-hmm. it has a liner like if in case we have spoken about any collaborations or something let's follow it up with another other email or other thing you know all these things because um, that like mutual fund markets are subjected to market risk bolte hai na waise that yeah. same thing uh, possibly you include in your whatsapp business or these places also mm-hmm. i don't think it's going to protect in every way but it it serves as a pointer not as an evidence like ishani says at least yeah 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 but uh, those two uh, uh, one more thing to add like yeah. when you are having business transactions always keep a note of the business transactions in any invoicing app there is many invoicing app free nowadays please have a please just use or i say uh, if even if you are two minutes to have all the transactions got recorded in the invoicing app because that way uh, you will be able to have a track of everything plus always have uh, any of your transactions via uh, the one account yeah so everything was there on that monday app it was a, a business app uh, but uh, not the designs but at least the verbal thing that yes you are doing this and you know uh, what about this design yeah. or whatever in india Because like we, we have a culture like this right everybody yeah. is having uh, the mutual collaborations verbally they uh, like just believe in this kind of transaction from the very like long time people are having mutual collaborations and yes it works out why because some people believe that their words have power yeah i mean it was to mutual friends so that's why i mean it was uh, like out of trust and uh, the thing is that we had gone in for a private limited company registration initially we were uh, signing up as an llp and then we were uh, guided uh, that you no know, we should go for private limited so that it's easy to get funds and investors and uh, that's why the whole thing took uh, time and meanwhile the production and the designing and the website everything got ready so that was the lapse but now moving forward i just want to understand that now that i'm moving forward and i'm doing mostly 90% i've like you know changed the designs and i've made new designs and everything but just for those two three designs will it be worth it or should i change that also or i mean i can go ahead one more uh, interesting thing here in your case sonia for example if you are having uh, the similar designs we are using similar designs mm-hmm. and if you can get them published and if mm-hmm. your friend uh, mm-hmm. files you for the copyright infringement or any kind of design infringement yeah then uh, she has to prove one thing which is a prior use document which shows that she is the one who designed this content before you 
Hmm. So then, I don't think she will be able to prove that out. Yeah. But I will also recommend it uh, to have uh, like whenever you have any design work published, then hmm. at least published as an archive on your website, because that way out you will be able to have an electronic proof of it that hmm. you have published the design prior to hmm. any other course. Okay. Okay. Done. Uh, so these right kind now. of things happen. Like another yeah. person even is uh, like that patent thing. Patent is something which is very costly affair, which is uh, like aisa nahi hai ki har koi har din hi kuch naya invent kar raha hai. Once a time you get something in your mind and you have all your efforts uh, into that thing and somebody else goes away with your credit and invention. And I can understand how bad it feels. But yes, uh, you should always keep in mind that hmm. copyright infringement, patent infringement, and trademark infringements happens usually. And to protect them, you should have evidences of prior use with you for invention. Like it is the one who invented it. For creating hmm. those evidences, you should uh, just like proceed safely via emails. Not uh, even screenshots are not uh, be used as uh, evidence. They can only be used as a mark in the uh, court of law. So that's why screenshot also is not recommended as such when it comes to proper legal registered venture. But yes, like between pens, you can have the screenshots and all. But in the court of law, they are not admissible. So that's why always find newer ways, always uh, like have contract court signed or uh, like even if you can make a simple partnership deed between two founders and get it stamped on the 100 rupee stamp paper that is fine enough for uh, sake of the evidence but don't just for saving your 30 minutes two minutes don't proceed like this because people uh, can save uh, like people will be utilizing only 30 minutes of theirs like for doing mm -hmm. this stuff but just because they want to save this 30 minutes they just uh, want to proceed without having any kind of legal registrations and all. So one uh, thing to add on the intellectual property is a trademark as well because trademark is something which takes the brand value and it is also adding uh, when you are applying for any kind of uh, fundings and any kind of incubations and all any kind of support on the side of the government they will definitely ask one question from the person that are you having any kind of ownership of IP? And trademark is one which is very important. So always uh, like because trademark process takes around six to eight months. So that's why person should proceed early for the same because you will be getting the registration after six to eight months. And this six to eight months is the period when you will be getting uh, the trademark without any objection. Because if any objection got raised, then mm -hmm. even after one or two years, you will not get the trademark. But the issue is that since my company is not registered, I'm not able to trademark it. No, no, no. You can uh, have the trademark as an individual as well on your brand. But okay. in that case, you will be the sole owner of this trademark. But if you have the trademark or any IP got registered in the name of your company, then huh. it will be counted as an asset of your company and the value of the trademark will increase as uh, the asset of the company will increase. So, okay. like... It will multiply many times uh, according mm -hmm. to the valuation of your company if uh, you will having any kind of IPR or registered in the name of the company. Okay. So it is always suggested to register any kind of IPRs in the name of your legal ventures, not on your name as an individual. Okay. Okay. Moving forward with the next slide, which is the funding and growth. So we will be sharing the EBC funding and how the equity got diluted. So I will be Thank sharing you. and even uh, telling all of you. Uh, mathematical formulas for it as well in case anybody wants to have the paper and uh, page anybody wants to have uh, the parent paper with them then please take it yeah like once you're ready probably um, others can just give a thumbs up on the emoji that would help so that Ishani can continue with the next. So please uh, take out your paper and pen and start 
other things. I'm telling that how the equity sharing and naval ABC funding were done and what it is actually mean by the equity dilution. So let's go ahead with the things. There's a question, uh, Ishani. Uh, Satyan has put, probably you can just take that accordingly. Uh, what are the compliance requirements post registrations and the consequences of non compliance? Is his question. Sure, uh, we'll be coming on this point just after uh, this slide. Sure. Yeah. So, that the compliances, though we need, is according to the business. So, as Mina asked, according to the website, I forgot about completely the same. But if it's a blog website, then you need a copyright disclaimer for the content. Plus, if you are having any kind of content, um, got like contributed by any other person, then you have to provide them uh, this credits. So it is comes under the morality, moral rights of that uh, person who has contributed the content on your website. So always provide the credits to the contributors, even if they are your employees. So even employees of yours have the moral rights over the content they have created. So always keep in mind about the same thing. Uh, sorry, um, my handwriting looks like kids. Oh, sorry for the same. Uh, but am I able to show you how uh, this sharing works? So yes, uh, every company initially has generally uh, 10,000 of the shares. So if one share is of 10 rupees, then the evaluation of the company, like share capital is this much, 1 lakh rupees. Everybody who has uh, like a little knowledge regarding the registration process, then you might know that you have to deposit 1,000 if you are a private limited company into the current bank account. If you are OBC, only 10,000 rupees. So it works according to this, like, 10,000 shares, having one share of 10 rupees, then you will be having a capital of 1 lakh rupees. So now uh, it is the founder A, it is the founder B. They are having 50-50% of the shares. And that's why like how much uh, they will get in the, like what is their share? Please comment in the chat box what the amount that they will be getting. From this one lakh please yeah Vinay, uh, so for the moral rights we just need to write a line uh, that for example if this contact is contributed by some other person so this content should have a line that this credits of this content goes to this person or uh, name of the person then you should write the line that she or he has contributed this content to our website. Only this line will be enough. Or the words credits and their name, or you can write it. This person has contributed this content to the website. Only this much is fine for the moral rights. For giving them the authorship uh, name on the same. But the commercial claim of the same thing will be retained by the company, which will not be retained by any other person. So I am waiting for the answer, like how much each founder will be having. If the total uh, value of the company is one lakh at the time of the registration. Exactly, Sadeen, it's 50,000. So both of them will be having uh, 50,000 of the share capital share of the company with them and they will be having this uh they will be having five thousand shares each with them shares five thousand and the amount divided between the both is fifty thousand again uh sorry for the writing it seems too bad now what happens like if they're uh going into the shark tank for the series a level funding what happens that uh, they will be targeting 9% for example. Yeah. I think 
think it's better to write text. Did nine percent uh, of the shares for the ten maps? So this is the thing. Any person? If they are contributing nine percent of the, if they want nine percent of the equity and they are contributing ten lakh rupees, so can you uh, comment in the chat box like how each A and B have to contribute for this nine lakh nine uh, sorry nine percent? So here comes like this under A. And this founder B, they will not be having a big big percentage of shares they have in the company will be for the point. Right, because nine percent is the amount, uh, is the sorry, is the percentage here. So they both have to dilute it, and uh, the amount here will be, the percentage here will be forty five point five percent, and B also will be having forty five point five percent because nine percent. If you divide it by two, then both the founders will be having four point five and four point five of the percentage got diluted from the. Actual percentage they have, which is initially is fifty percent, right? Then the commission, uh, like the amount raised by both the founders is ten lakh rupees, right? But what happens to the shares? Is it five thousand, or they have to contribute from the shares? No, uh, they don't have to contribute it from the shares. So the shares will be five thousand only, five thousand with founder. We now uh, guess how we will provide uh, this money to this person, venture capital, venture investor is C, 9%. Sorry for this slow teaching method of mine. But uh, like, so how you will be providing this 10, how you will be providing them 9%? And having this ten percent amount got invested in your company. Any guesses? Uh, no, no worries. So you will be providing them ten thousand shares. Uh, so make sure uh, don't get confused. This amount five thousand is the shares. This is the shares amount of this. Uh, both the founders have initially, right? This is the amount here. This is the amount. So this is five thousand is the amount. Uh, is the shares five thousand shares with founder A, five thousand shares with founder B. Both of them have same number of shares, but they have issued new shares from their company, which is thousand more shares. Now in total, if I talk, uh, how many shares they have? Total shares. Will do five thousand of founder A plus five thousand of founder B, then thousand of angel invest, right? Then we will be having total number of shares is eleven thousand, right? Then uh, some of you might be thinking. That this eleven thousand will again be multiplied with ten, 
but this is not the case. Uh, this is here. I get it multiplied to 10, and it will only come 1.15. Right? This is not the way of doing it. So it is incorrect. This is incorrect. Way of having uh, this valuation is that uh, they will share and shares uh, to this person at 10 percent rate and 990 shares on the premium rates. So these are known as the premium shares. So they will be providing uh, these premium shares to this person. Premium shares. So this is the way of increasing the valuation of the company. So now what happens? Like if you're sharing on uh, like this much. They have one valuation of the company. So how this total valuation got evaluated? So they will be having like X amount. Uh, this fifty percent is with person one, and fifty percent is, is person two. So have we will get it evaluated by nine percent. So to change the nine percent, we get it. There it is. Ishani, probably you just quickly, if you can, once you do this, you can run us through this. Um, yeah. So uh, this is the correct method of doing this. Like they have shared, uh, they have issued just ten shares on the normal rates, nine ninety shares on the premium rates, and then their final evaluation of the company will be one point one crore because this nine ninety shares got issued having one share value of thousand rupees. Uh, this one share value here is thousand rupees. So here this happens like they have issued a share of 1000 rupees, 990 shares having each one value of 1000. So this total uh, when you just join this 11,000 shares. So now uh, guess what, like you just raised 10 lakh of the funding and your company valuation boosts to 1.1 crore from 1 lakh. So this is the benefit of having the funding in your company. Your evaluation boosts uh, in many a times, like 10 to 100 times it boosts like this. So that is why people are in, interested in funding nowadays because the company valuation before was only this much, right? This much. Now it comes this much. When they will be having Series B funding, so this again process, everybody will be diluting its shares. But like this is a dilution. Like first they have 50% of the equity, now they have this much. But shares of the company got increased, which is 11,000 from 
the ten thousand before, right? It was ten thousand before. Now it's seven thousand. The value to the company and the value of each share from rupees ten has increased. This thousand. Each share now of your company is valued at thousand rupees, which is before ten. That's why the valuation of your company was one point one crore because you have issued this much of the premium shares to uh, this angel investor, and they have only contributed ten lakh. So that is the thing. If you will got funding even of one lakh rupees, your uh, company valuation will automatically boost, like just to. Uh, parabola it will boost so that's why everybody is interested in the funding just because they want to have higher valuation of their company so what will happen when you be ha having the higher valuation of the company that you will be able to have better collaborations better marketing better like vis visibility in, in the market and also people generally focuses on the businesses which have a good valuation because everybody wants to invest in a business having a good valuation the matter has a very good valuation but the matter is in loss so valuation of a company is not a uh, evidence whether they are making profit or not it is only something which depends on the funding if they got the funding then the valuation of their company goes like when it comes to growth so i will come up on the next thing um everything so yeah ishani like it's um, 11:50 so uh, yeah uh, going ahead with the another only two things which is the compliance and the certificates uh, one wants after registration so it depends on the type of the registration so if it's a food registration for example then you need fssi if it's so and like So the thing is in environmental certifications. So it is very important nowadays to have a certain environmental certifications with you for your business. Uh, for example, uh, if you have you are having a salon, then uh, how you are decomposing the hairs you are getting from the salon. So you need environment. Certificates for it. There are certain kinds of certificates which is required. Like I'm not the expert of what is certificates, which is required for the environment uh, process, which uh, Sadin can better tell you. But this is something which is required if you are having a salon, for example. How are decomposing uh, the chemicals in certain industries in a certain product uh, industries? How are decomposing uh, the waste materials? These kinds of certifications are required as per your business model. So this is the funding process. How it works? Like uh, this is the founder one and two. They have their like, and then you raise some kind of funds from your family and friends. Then this is the series A funding where you get uh, like funding from the angel investors and all. That's uh, how your evaluation of the company boost as a parabola. As you can see, it is boosting at a very high rate, which is not possible if you will continue with the simple business model. So that is why people are invest, uh, interested in the fundings and all. And this is the next step, which is the compliance. So compliance is very important. GST is very important. So why some people thought that I don't need GST just because I'm not paying this kind, uh, this much of the threshold of the business, which is a forty lakhs or twenty lakhs in some states. But GST is important to show a uh, legal evidence of the traction of your business. If I'm making certain uh, amount of the business, then I have to show this. Uh, yes, uh, Satin, you. We will invite you for the social media. I will definitely love to have you on board uh, for the environmental certifications for need for their company. Uh, so, like, if I talk about the post registrations and all, so only FSSI if you're a food business, then another uh, certifications for the environment and. Like if it's a drug business, then you need uh, for the medicines and all a beta, and there's so many other kinds of certifications. One on ISO certifications if it's a service or provider company uh, for the standardization, like for complete 
visibility one wants the certifications and also to gain the trust of the market because i personally would not want to try out even samples of any company in the food if they don't have the fsi certificate with them so that is the thing like if somebody will have the certifications another person will definitely trust them plus they will not be getting the penalties which are there if in, in case you will not have the certificates with you these certificates can be the gsc uh, certificate as well gsc certificate is very important for the business nowadays nobody wants to uh, have the business with any company who can't help them in the cash flow because gsc is important for the cash flows uh, as well like if i am uh, giving certain amount of money to other person and they can't give me credits back like if i'm purchasing something if i don't get credits back then generally we will don't want to get into this or uh, like enter into the services and the purchases from that venture plus there is another thing regarding the gst that there are certain businesses which are exempted from the gst because of them is the lawyer a lawyer is being a professional service provider is exempted from the gst a doctor as a professional is exempted from the gst some of the ventures have uh, the negative uh, gst for example if you are buying something from any person then it is the person from whom you buy have to pay the gst right but it is not always so sometimes if you are having the delivery of some product into your uh, venture or your your like the registered office then as a delivery chalan they used to get uh, they used to deliver it to you so these uh, delivery chalans when it got issued then you have you will be the one who is paying the gst on this is how like we also discussed it in our previous section on the gst and uh, common errors one have uh, during the gst filings so uh, the protection and the labor laws uh, for uh, uh, if i discuss the labor laws and epf and pf registration and the essic registration is required so why are these kinds of registration are required and what is the limit for it is if you are having a 10 plus employees in your company then you need a sexual harassment internal complaint committee icc internal complaint committee for the sexual harassment when you need this when you have 10 plus of employees and any employee from this 10 plus is a lady so then you need icc committee so what is the composition of icc committee is that one person is a lawyer or a sex, uh, or a ngo head one person as the senior employee of the company one person as a director or any uh, like management person can be there so there is a three person board one from the outside this is the lawyer or the ngo person second is the employee senior employees another is uh, the management person so it is compulsory to have an internal company committee which most of the companies in india is missing and there is a penalty of flat 50000 rupees and if it can be uh, more than that uh, like 2 lakhs in some cases there is any complaint against you and all so that's why uh, it is very important to have these kinds of registrations compliances got done another is the labor laws as i uh, was talking like essic so it is the employee insurance uh, that you have with the state so if you have 20 plus employees then essic is important pf is important so uh, like while generally have the legal registration of the company people used to get registered themselves at the essic and pf but if you are a sole proprietorship then also you need these kinds of registration for the persons you have in your shop or something shop establishment certificate is also one thing which is very important for the businesses so this is how like business registrations and compliances got done according to your business type so we have a uh, created a checklist as well like i am into this business and what are the like certifications and compliances one will require so we will be sharing it soon with you plus uh, having the legal problems in the terms of compliances so you must be knowing that there are roc compliances annual mandatory compliances for any private limited and the llp with the registrar of companies so you need to fulfill it, uh, fulfill it in time because there will be time bar like if you will delay it just by a day then you will get the penalty of 5000 thousand like the are not liberal enough to provide you uh, this much of the like one day delay will cost you that much. so some 
one time uh, one of my client asked me like why ROC are that much of the big come like big penalties and I replied to that person because they want you to be uh, responsible for the company of yours. They want you to be responsible that you have 120 days to make a compliance and why you delayed for like even one day. So that's why to, just to make the people responsible, they have this much of the huge penalties with them. And uh, if you will get penalty even a single time, then from the next time you will be very responsible for everything. And even before time, you will be doing the thing. That's why just to teach lazy entrepreneurs a lesson, they are doing this penalties and all. So I can say uh, like penalties are also very important not to just to make people liable on the things they have started. And another thing is like, they come up with the solutions and all the legal tools and things you need for the startup. And please don't hesitate to ask questions and even contact Vida or me for any kind of discussion you want to have. So we have already done this thing like starting out the business. Karo, protect, karo, manage and grow. Karo. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is really, really uh, good. Um, thank you so very much, uh, Ishani, for sharing. I mean, uh, it's really been an insightful one. Um, as we are coming to the end of the uh, session, I wish to say thanks again to you. And uh, with this, I will be pausing the recording uh, so that because this content, what we have recorded over here will be, uh, yeah, we will be using this for the future as a repository. And uh, you wish to avail that, please uh, write to me. My number is 9886126788. Uh, since it's a paid session, we would, um, you know, if you wish to avail and you wish to check the recorded content, we would let you know how to get the same. Um, and we have an exclusive WhatsApp community for the legal one for today. Um, Ishani would be sharing a few handouts. Uh, and easy to read like templates or what she had mentioned with regards to uh, contract templates. Um, you can access the same. Uh, for the same, uh, please send a message to me on 9886126788. Um, because I've asked a couple of you for the number. I would be in a position to add only when you share your number. Uh, so please message me. And uh, with that, I'm just pausing the recording. Thank you, Ishani.